Hey guys, Chris Weistall here with Allen Fitness. I just wanted to take a moment to begin a series going over a basic five day split using dumbbells and a flat bench that you can do at home. Uh, I know a lot of us are locked up, cooped up at home, wishing we had the gym, but if you have some dumbbells and a flat surface, preferably a bench, you can do this workout. And now, while I could just say, here's the workout, do it, I feel like it would be doing a disservice to everybody if I didn't break down the workout and explain why I did it the way I did it. So, without further ado, starting out, we f well, first we form a plan. And my plan for this week is we're working... Now, if you, if you have trouble reading this, I will take a photo and that will be in the post. You can uh, take a look. If you have any questions, please let me know. I apologize. My lighting and camera situation is going to be improving very quickly. But I'll walk you through this here. My plan here on my calendar is we're starting out. Mondays are going to be chest day. Tuesday, legs. Wednesday, shoulders. Thursdays, biceps and triceps. Friday, back. Saturday and Sunday are going to be reserved for active recovery. I say active recovery, not rest, because I believe that a lot of people, when they think rest days, they feel like it's just a day to do nothing. And that's not necessarily what we want to go for. I'm all for taking a day off every once in a while. That's totally fine. But let's not confuse active recovery and a rest day. On these active recovery days, you're going to be getting a little bit of a sweat, but it's not going to be a hard workout. It's going to facilitate you being able to work out just as hard, if not harder, the next week. But back to Monday. Today, I worked chest. So what I did here is I have a couple... Uh, adjustable dumbbells. If you don't have these, you work with whatever weight you can. And the reasons I selected these particular rep and set schemes are because my main goal right now is trying to build a little bit of extra muscle. And one of the best ways you can think of when you're trying to build muscle is that you want to take your muscle group to at or near muscle failure. Generally, this is thought of when you use heavier weights going a little bit less reps, really putting it in there. But if you don't have access to heavy, heavy weights, if you're just working with dumbbells at home, we work with what we have. So that being said, after my warm up on the heavy bag, I spent about 20, 30 minutes usually on the heavy bag, warming up, doing some kickboxing. It's really great for my energy. Many people will say, and this is not wrong, that doing your cardio before lifting weights can hinder your gains or maybe it's better to do your cardio after lifting weights for the sake of conserving energy for your lifting. This is not necessarily wrong. In fact, if I was micromanaging or if I was a professional athlete, that's probably the way I would do it. The reason I do the heavy bag and my cardio first, number one reason, it's, it's what I enjoy. Usually by the end of lifting weights, I'm too tired to get on the heavy bag. So I love I love getting on there for my warm up because it's a great workout. It lets me practice my martial arts technique, and I feel generally good when I do it. So all that being said, your warm up can be whatever you like it to be. You you can start with dynamic warm ups. I recommend against doing hard static stretching before you lift heavy weights because you don't want those muscles to go from a very relaxed and lengthened state to sudden contraction. You can invite muscle spasms and nobody wants that. So, warm up however you like. Make sure you got a good sweat. Make sure your muscles are nice and pliable. I started out with a dumbbell chest press. It's a nice basic technique. We can go over the specific exercises in another video, but I just want to break down the actual workout. So, I started out with just 20 pounds going 15 reps why did I start light I started light because number one I have a few issues with some shoulders and and spine and I don't like to jump into really heavy weights right off the bat I like to get the motion down make sure that my muscle and joint are ready and thus I start out with lighter weight just to make sure that I'm ready one set of 15 for with a one minute rest afterwards then feeling pretty good, pretty warmed up from the heavy bag and from that first set of just 20 pounds. I increased it to 40 pounds because I felt like I was ready for higher weight. 
one set of 15 reps with a one minute rest afterwards. So going these high reps, normally if if I was at the gym and we had access to all these, you could get on a barbell and do some bench presses or get heavier weights. Working with what I have, since I can't just use whatever weight I want to, what I want to focus on is how tired I am throughout and at the end of the exercises. Once again, bringing my muscles to or near muscle failure. To get to that point while staying safe, I'm gradually increasing the weight. So on my second set, I went to 40 pounds in each arm. One set of 15. I don't like to go over 15 reps, which we can we can talk about another time, but generally maximum set if you can go 15 reps and you can still go, it's time to increase the weight. So one set of 15 reps at 40 pounds with a one minute rest afterwards. And then I increased the weight to 50 pounds. This is pretty much my maximum at, of the dumbbells that I have. So what I do here is I go ahead and do the one set of 15. Still pretty, pretty uh, easy and doable, but I can't increase the weight. So when I cannot increase the weight, what do I do? I add more volume. By this time, I was just feeling pretty tired, so I did. I lowered my sets to about 12 reps because it was getting a little bit more difficult to get to the full 15 reps. So I did two sets at 12 reps with 50 pounds with a one minute rest in between. Now, why one minute? One minute rest because when I want to build muscle and I want to get to the point or near muscle failure, if you have too much rest, it becomes more of an endurance exercise where you can continue going and add more sets and more sets and more sets. When I limit the rest and don't let my ATP, PCE system, which is are the chemicals that allow your muscles to move and replenish, the waste of which is actually lactic acid. There's, there's this whole science to what we do. So when we are at this point and we are limiting our amount of rest we don't let the, the muscle completely recover so that has a little bit of a diminishing return so you do a couple sets at this low level of rest you can bring your muscle to or near muscle failure even if you have lighter weight this could mean that you might have to do more sets limit the rest even more but the point is when you're trying to grow muscle, you want to be at or near muscle failure. So total of five reps on the dumbbell chest press or five sets. I'm sorry, because we don't want to overload it. We want to, we want to move to other muscle groups as well. Now I, I'm of the firm belief that sometimes less is more when we're lifting weights. It's about quality, not quantity. If you don't have the weight, sometimes you have to add some quantity, but we want to make sure that we're nice and well-rounded. Generally, when you're doing any muscle group, you want to hit, hit it from all the angles possible your total sets can range between 10 and 15 that's not all of one exercise though that's across all exercises in that particular workout which is one reason why splitting is pretty good because when you want to hit every muscle group thoroughly it can take a little bit of time this way you get a little bit more focus on each muscle group and it's a bit better quality that's why a lot of the people that are really avid about weightlifting and bodybuilding do their workouts in splits over many days. So the next exercise we did was the dumbbell chest fly. <clears throat> Once again, we're starting a little bit light just to make sure that we have the form and motion set. So I just started out with 20 pounds, going to set of 15 with a one minute rest afterwards. Gradually increasing it up until we got to 35 pounds where I felt that that was a pretty good weight to that I could really push myself, but at the same time, be safe and not really invite injury because again, no spotter. So we'd end up doing two sets of 12 at the maximum of 35. Again, limiting the rest so that we're, that we're tired. By the end of these five sets here, I was definitely ready to be done with the chest flies. So then moving on, dumbbell pullovers. Again, just gradually increasing the weight. Started out at 35 pounds for one set of 15. Just making sure I got the form down because I don't want to injure myself. I want to make sure I'm doing it correctly. I want to make sure that I'm engaging the muscles that need to be engaged and following through with each and every rep. 
So we, we moved from 35 pounds, one set of 15, again, one minute rest in between, 40 pounds, 45 pounds for two sets of 15. I was feeling pretty tired at that point. And I was actually thinking about stopping, but I thought at the end, I still got a little bit left. Why not finish strong? 50 pounds on the pullover for one set of 12 as my big finish. So I did one set at 35 pounds for 15 reps, one set at 40 pounds, two sets at 45 pounds, and then a big finish one set 50 pounds at 12 reps. After that, for my cool down, because you don't want to just stop with, uh, after a hard workout like that and walk away. After the cool down, or after the workout, starting the cool down, just light static stretching because you don't want to stretch too hard. And honestly, with static stretching, I'll explain all about stretching in another video, but all you're really doing is making sure the signal is happening. You don't have to really pull on the muscle to get a good static stretch. So light static stretching, foam rolling, which I'll show you a really cool technique to help stretch the chest while at the same time kind of putting a little pressure on the soft tissue in your traps. So light static stretch, foam roll, and I went and just had a little bit of protein. I added a fueling from my wonderful nutrition program, which uh, was about uh, 10 grams of protein plus about 20% of all 24 vitamins and minerals. On top of that, I just added a little bit of protein shake, a little bit of protein powder for a total of about 35 grams of protein, which is a good amount after a good weightlifting session because you don't you don't want to necessarily ingest a ton of protein right after. It's honestly better to go smaller, middle amounts of protein a little bit every few hours. So, you know, I just had 35 grams of protein then. About an hour or two after that, I'm going to have maybe another 20 to 30 grams of protein, maybe a meal, moving on throughout after the workout. So once you're done with the workout, remember, do your cool down, make sure you're getting a little bit of proper nutrition. So come back tomorrow, I'm gonna break down a leg workout that I'm gonna be doing because Tuesday is gonna be leg day. So come check that out. If you found this video valuable and you would like a workout customized to what you have available and what your needs and goals are, please drop a comment, hit, hit me up at my website, hit me up in a messenger, and let's get you started on your first 30 days where you can lose four to six pounds and feel great. So, hope this helps. Talk to you guys all soon.